Good morning, church. Good to be with you today. We're going to start with Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds a house, its builders labor over it in vain. Unless the Lord watches over a city, the watchman stays alert in vain. In vain you get up early and stay up late, working hard to have enough food. Yes, he gives sleep to the one he loves. We are reminded here of our profound dependence on the Lord. A man prepares his steps, but the Lord directs his way. We are constantly, totally dependent on God. And we can labor till our hands are bleeding, till we're exhausted. We can work 80 hours a week and push ourselves to the absolute limit. But unless we are laboring in the favor of the Lord our God, nothing will ever be successful. That's why it's so important we start our days in prayer, why we, we should go to God and say, God, what is it you have for me to do today? What is my good labor? And it's okay. I mean, we're meant to work. We're designed to support ourselves and to put in our work week. That pleases God. If you don't work, you don't eat, says Paul. But we should never anticipate that success is because of our hard labor, but rather we're laboring because we love the Lord our God, we're seeking to obey his commands, and we're always doing it in his power, and we're trusting in him. He gives sleep to the one he loves. How many of us, all of us, have stayed up late with worry, got up in the middle of the night with worry, woke up with the burdens of yesterday and today on our minds, I've done it. I know that you have done it too. And this verse reminds us that he gives sleep to the one he loves. When I put my burdens on God, I can rest. When I trust him, I can rest. When he blesses me, he blesses me with sweet sleep because my burdens and my troubles have all been cast upon him. So let's labor for him, trust him with the results and sleep sweetly because we understand that he is trustworthy. Then I want to say a brief note about the transfiguration. When Peter, James, and John go up on that mountaintop with Jesus and he's dazzling white, two figures appear who we know very well, Moses and Elijah. And we could see that Moses would represent the law and Elijah the prophets, and there is Jesus. He's come to bring the new covenant. And Peter says, let's make, uh, let's make houses for all of you up here, tabernacles. And that word tabernacle, again, is the what um, the Israelites initially built in the wilderness, that dwelling place. And the festival of booths or tabernacles was celebrated when all the Israelites became homeless for a week to remember that time of wandering. So he was saying, let's build up these shelters so that we can dwell up here and you can dwell up here. And as he's even talking, God says, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, and this cloud overshadows them. And this word overshadow is the same overshadowing we see um, when it says that the Holy Spirit would overshadow Mary just like this, this cloud would come upon her. And... Moses and Elijah are gone, and only Jesus remains. And God says, this is my son, the chosen one. Listen to him. And so we see that the law and the prophets are the foundations of the faith, but the new covenant, Jesus is the one to whom we are to listen. And there's so much that we could talk about in this chapter 9. There's just an amazing amount of stuff. Let me know what stood out to you in your readings and uh, how you would love to apply that to your life.